In today's jazz guitar lesson, you learn how to improvise in the Dorian scale pattern number one. Hi, my dear jazz guitar friends all over the world. Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. I'll show you the chord scale and arpeggio relationship and several Dorian licks, of course. You'll learn what to focus on, on and what musical tools I use to create interesting and authentic sounding jazz guitar licks. I've made uh, the taps that include one uh, bonus uh, lick and backing tracks, of course. And you can download all this from fun from one of the links down below in the description box. Please read the short download instructions right next to the link. And now let's get some Dorian licks under our fingers. We will be in the key of D Dorian for the entire lesson. So what does that mean? We are actually, there is a home key and that's the C major scale. The second degree of the C major scale is the D Dorian mode. And there is a D minor seven chord in that scale and that's the native chord, okay? So the native chord of the D Dorian scale is the D minor seven chord. And we play that scale whenever we have a D minor seven or a minor seven chord and it's the second degree of a scale, okay? Which happens in jazz all the time because we have two five ones, the jazz cadence. All right, now the first pattern of this scale is up here on the fretboard, but before I show you that, I wanna show you the chord because you need to know the chord arpeggio and scale relationship. Otherwise, you focus on the wrong tones. If you think C major, oh, it's a C major scale, that's easy, then you focus on C tones, okay? We want to focus on the chord tones of the D minor seven chord. So you gotta know the chord, the arpeggio, and then the scale is the last thing you need to know. So here you go. Uh, D minor seven chord is on the 10th fret in this position. 10, 10 of D, G and B, okay? We don't play the A and we don't play the E string. This is a simple D minor seven chord. All right, and it's included in our first pattern. And our first pattern starts three semitones to the left. That's just simply because it's the first, this one, the B, is the first tone available in that range, okay? So I have B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So that's basically just a C scale, C major scale, but, as soon as the D minor chord is backing below, we want to focus on the D minor chord tones. Now we need to know the arpeggio, that's the chord tones. D, the minor third is F, the fifth of the D minor seven is A, the flat seventh is always uh, here in relation to the root. So that's the first octave of a D minor seven arpeggio in this uh, pattern. Second octave, D, F, A, bridge over, roll over, and C. And there is another D, we can play that too. So here's the entire arpeggio. And that looks like a pentatonic almost, doesn't it? Right? It is, the pentatonic is a minor seven arpeggio but it has also the 11th in there, okay? So, but that's also a good trick. If you have a D minor seven chord, you can also always use uh, the pentatonic scale because it includes the arpeggio. And all the arpeggio tones are of course included in that first pattern. If you take a closer look in, in the tabs and in, in the uh, scale diagram, uh, for the download below the video, then you will see that all the uh, the arpeggio tones are included. All right, now uh, we want to focus the chord tones on beats one, two, three, four, maybe all of them, maybe just some of them, but the uh, chord tones, the arpeggio tones fall on the beat usually, and the scale tones or chromatic tones that are not even included in the scale should be on off beats. All right, so now let's check the first lick and see how that applies. Okay, here we go. 
Alright, I start on chord tones. I play the F, which is the third of the uh, the minor third of the D minor seven chord. F, A is the fifth, C is the seventh. We just had this in the arpeggio. And here's the ninth. Alright, so this is a D minor nine or an F major seven arpeggio. So F major seven is a super imposition over D minor. And now I play some chromatic. The B flat, B, and then back to chord tones, D and C. I make a pull off here. And this is a typical bebop phrase because of this bebop, bebop element, but we don't have a rest in between. It's played without a rest. Okay, second bar. I play, uh, start on the fifth of the chord, that's the A, chromatic, and going up to the sixth of the chord, and here I start a B half diminished arpeggio, which is another superimposition. B, D, F, and A. So B half diminished, you can see that here already, this is a B half diminished chord, and the D minor is part of it, all right? So it's a D minor 6, actually, D minor 13. All right? So. And I go over to the C. And that last part already was a D minor 7 also. Right? So there's a D minor 7 here included. Okay? And now I go back to the A. And I have my bebop motif again. Right? Bebop. Seven, eight of B is another bebop. And now I have a little rest, eighth note rest, and go to the tenth. Those are chord tones. I want to end on chord tones. I have this chord in mind, D minor seven, and I play the A and the F bebop. All right? Now let's listen to this at slow tempo. Number two is all about enclosures. So here we go. We start on a chord tone, the A, the fifth of the uh, chord, and I chromatically go down to the G. I use a pull off. We always use hammer or pull offs from off beats to beats. Not each one, but if we use it, we use it from uh, off beat to beat. One and two. So we keep the jazz phrasing intact, okay? I have a video on jazz phrasing, so very important, check it out. All right, and this is the first uh, tone of my enclosure, okay? We have to know the target note. Where do we wanna go? I wanna go to that F, okay? So, um, but I wanna enclose it, not directly play it. So I, I take a scale tone above the F is the G, and then I take the chromatic, below the F is E. That happens to be a scale tone as well. So you can call it a chromatic or a scale tone. And here I go. That sounds better than just going directly. Now I go up again to that A by rolling my finger. G, F. All right, E, and now we start the second enclosure. Here is my target tone, the D, the root, okay? Um, well, first I, sorry, first I played, and then I go chromatically down 
so I have chromatic below the target tone. Then I have a scale tone above the target tone, and here's the target tone. All right. with my index finger because now I'm back into in, in that position I go down to C and I have the B in mind I climb up from the A chromatic to the B in order to get my bebop thing again B A uh, G those are not the best notes for the D minor chord but right after I resolve this with another bebop thing to the fifth of the root chord and the third of the chord. So we have again we have bebop, bebop, no rest in between, right? So here's the entire uh, lick number two at slow tempo. This one is a Kenny Burrell lick actually and it's all about triads and good phrasing, interesting phrasing. <clears throat> he starts with an A minor triad, you know that's the shape derived from the D minor, here you go, moved all the way up, it's an inversion, so you got another root, here's the root A. And why does A minor fit over D minor? A, C, E are the chord tones of A minor, and A and C are included in the D minor, those are the 5th and the 7th, and the E is the 9th, which we already had already included, also included in the F major 7 superimposition. So here's another way to have a 9th included. 9th is always a beautiful sound in uh, for a minor chord. All right, 8, 10 B, and uh, the 9th of the G string. It's a quarter and two eight notes. One, two, and three is a rest. Um, and then he plays 16th notes. Well, the first is an eighth note here on the 10th fret of the D string. And now a group of 16 notes. Seven, nine, ten, eight. It's just a scale from D to G. Um, make sure to have it alternate picked. Down, up, down, up, because it's really fast. And this one is already the first of a C major triad, right? G, E, and now C. You can play any triad or any arpeggio over uh, that's within the scale. The question is how good does it fit, okay? Um, this one fits quite well because we have uh, the 11th now for attention, the 9th, and the uh, 7th, all right? compared to a D, in relation to a D minor chord, all right? So that gives us interesting chord tones. And then, seven, that's a D, E, A, uh, C, and A, right? From, from the C uh, chord. And those last three tones, the nine, 10 of D, and seven of D, are a A minor triad again. That's an A minor triad, A, C, E. All right, here's the entire lick again at slow tempo.
one is a little trickier, I know. Um, I made this to have some more modern sounds in there for the more advanced players. Okay, we have uh, quartal sounds in here and some nice phrasing changes going on. Okay, from eight to triplets and to 16th notes. Here we go. I start on a chord tone. That's the F. And I have an enclosure to the E. The E is not a chord tone per se, but it's a good tone. But the ninth. Seven, eight, ninth. Going to my bebop thing again. Here's another bebop thing. From E to C and from D to uh, F. The thing with the bebop is uh, you have the not so good notes first. Those are not the best chord. Well, here is a chord tone actually. The C is a chord tone. And then you have chord tones. D and F are chord tones. Okay, root and third. So that's the thing with the bebop uh, thing. And we have an eighth note, and the rest is sixteenth notes. One and E, two E and E. And now I go into triplets. That's rhythmically challenging. And I have quarter uh, fourths. That's quarter sounds. Seven of D, going over to seven of G, and the eighth of B. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I'm a Trekkie. All right, so uh, those are fourths. And I slide over to uh, the tenth fret. And here is another. Fourth interval of fourths, ten to ten. It's a triplet, and here's regular eight notes again. Now we stay with eight notes. Um, the C chromatic that leads me to the A, a chord tone one, and it's on the offbeat. And then I go to another chromatic that leads me to the root. So chromatic on the offbeat chord tone on the beat. Not always, but often. To the C, a little rest. Trip, pullet, one. That's a good phrasing. Trip is the rest. Then I have the E, F, and D. F and D are chord tones again. Trip, pullet, one of the next bar. Okay, here's the whole thing at slow tempo. check out my Dorian playlist and I also have a playlist on 2-5-1 chord progressions for soloing, for comping. Check out my whole channel, share the love and the knowledge and please give this video a fat thumbs up if you like it and I hope to see you next week. Servus, baba!